Hey guys, Matt here. So I don't want to take up too much of your time with this video. It's Sunday and I kind of want to get back to gaming. But in this video, I want to show you my weekly portfolio update. And then I want to talk about some big news as far as AT&T and Tesla and that they have earnings coming up. So let's take a look at the portfolio itself. Uh, I finally passed 60K again. Now, this is something I'm not expecting for, you know, to uh, keep throughout the week. I... I mean, with the way the market's been going the past few weeks, months even, I fully expect this to drop back into the, the, the 59s or 58s sometime this week. But as of right now, 60K, I'm happy to see it. Uh, we got some big earnings coming up from, I mean, we got lots of earnings, but the ones that I'm going to talk about this week are AT&T and Tesla. Uh, Intel has, got, has some earnings coming up this week. There's not much I'm expecting to see from Intel because, I mean... The, the good stuff from Intel is like years away, and I just want to make sure that they're making progress on their new uh, uh, factories that, that they're building for their new chips and stuff, and that there aren't any more delays. So basically, as far as Intel, it's, it's, it's more what I don't want to see. Uh, before I go into AT&T and Tesla, let's take a look at my moves for the week. Uh, Verizon and AT&T had um, showed some real weakness last week. As a matter of fact, I think both these stocks hit their 52-week lows, or at least brushed past it. And I took full advantage. I took full advantage. Walgreens had an amazing uh, earnings report uh, last week, but the stock dropped. And I managed to, to, to take advantage of that right on time. Like, uh, I think for like the, the, the right during their earnings, it dropped 4%. And I was lucky, and I bought it then. And then it shot up to like 8, 10%, and then it went down to, to this much. But anyways, I'm really glad I bought Walgreens when I did. If this stock drops in the near future, I will continue to, to load up. So let's start with Tesla. Tesla has earnings coming out on Wednesday. And if we take a look at their analyst expectations, now these are really beautiful. These are really beautiful. Analysts are expecting this to go from $8.77 billion uh, la uh, a year ago, uh, same quarter a year ago, to 13.5 billion average, with a low estimate of 11.71 billion. If Tesla even brushes the lows, that is a phenomenal gain. Like these are phenomenal gains as far as EPS, as far as their earnings, 0.76 to 1.5. Like Tesla is hitting out of the park. And let me let me come cl clean with you guys. I am not worried about Tesla at all. Like if you like. Tesla released its, its vehicle delivery, deliveries for the quarter a few weeks ago, and it already passed expectations. So we already know that Tesla is going to crush these earnings. Like there is no doubt about it. And something something that I, I read just now, just I was, as I was browsing the page, is Mike Burry says he's no he's no longer betting against Tesla and has put position with Tesla trade. So remember how uh, I guess a few weeks a months ago, Mike Burry was shorting Tesla, and everyone made a huge deal about it. Because Michael Burry was famous that one time when he, you know, bet against the housing market and succeeded. Well, I mean, he was wrong. I mean, he, yeah, he's probably, he's probably, he's a famous investor. He's better than I am, certainly. But, I mean, he's wrong. And just take a look at vehicle sales. All you have to do is just type Tesla sales into Google and just brush through the news and just read any article. I mean, Tesla is dominating vehicle sales and there, there is nothing anyone can do about it. So as far as me and Tesla's earnings, I am not worried at all. Like I am not sweating it. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'll be very surprised if Tesla doesn't cross the earnings. Now, the stock price, that might be another thing because Tesla has released fantastic earnings before, but the stock price is cratered. Like that is, I mean, the stock price and earnings seem to be divorced from each other the, the, the you know the past couple of quarters for, for many companies. So as far as the stock price, who knows where that's going to go. But as far as the earnings themselves, like, I don't expect anything less than Tesla crushing it. AT&T has earnings on Thursday. And unlike Tesla, there are a few things I expect. Now, take a look. let's take a look at the analyst ratings. Uh, they're expected to go from a 0.76 EPS to a 0.77 as far as revenue estimates from a NA. Okay, so I couldn't find it on Yahoo, but we're talking a 42.3 to a 39. Now, 
that's kind of expected since AT&T has been, you know, uh, selling a lot of its positions, such as, you know, it got rid of DirecTV, DirecTV earlier this year, and I think some more stuff I, c I can't think of right now. But, I mean, AT&T has been, you know, slimming down, and so I do expect revenue to, to drop at least throughout the year. I mean, heck, it's going to be even worse when AT&T finally spins off its Warner Media in 2022, and then it the revenue drops even more. Now, AT&T, as I've said, is a long-term play. It is a, it's not a growth company. It's a company I'm buying for dividends. So, you know, stock prices don't matter that much. And even though AT&T is saying it's going to slash, its, well, it's going to effectively slash its dividend in 2022, I think it'll become a much more agile company. And I think I'm going to continue to profit uh, uh, greatly over the, over the, over the years, as long as, long as I, I buy AT&T when it's low. Now, as far as the earnings themselves, uh, yes. Yeah, so as far as revenue estimates and stuff, we don't know if they're going to beat or not. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of revenue. I just want, don't want them to go below the below the low. Now, as far as my sterner, harsher expectations, my harsher expectation is, is with the debt. This is my number one expectation out of this company in this quarter. So revenue, fine. Just, just go above the low. As far as debt, now, AT&T has... I mean, as you are well aware, a, a huge debt problem. And it's only gotten worse. Like in 2020, at the end of 2020, they said they were going to finally start focusing on their debt. And then, you know, then they bought more debt. It was for, you know, it was for, it was for a good purpose. They they paid for that 5G spectrum thing, which they won second place. So it, 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 it was a good, I mean, it was a good reason to take out debt. However, I mean, at this point, you know, they need to start paying their, their their debt. They have no excuse for the debt going up. And in the last quarter, they did show that. They did show them paying down their debt. But I mean, I want to see this number continue to go down court, this quarter. And, and as a matter of fact, every quarter from here on out. I mean, now that AT&T is devoted to becoming a more agile company, uh, devoted to, uh, you know, uh, becoming just 5G wireless internet, it has no reason to rack up any more debt. So... I, I want to see that, and uh, another thing, which I it's more of a, something I don't want to see, is surprises. ATT has had a uh, bit of notoriety for being a pain in the ass and dropping bomb shares like this. I mean, the whole spinning the Warner Media thing off, like that's something I disagree with uh, wholeheartedly. And you know, I, I I don't blame anyone who decided to sell out of ATT when that happened. I decided not to because I believe in AT&T and what it's trying to become. Just run of the mill. We're paying down our debt. Uh, we, we're having pretty decent revenue and things are going as expected. But anyways, take care. Have a great day and eat your vegetables.